So the one question I get asked the most is, how do you find your style? Or how do you get a style? And it's not so much how do you get, it's actually understanding what you, you already have a style, you just most likely don't know how to dig that out from within. And the problem is, is the whole learning curve of photography takes your style off you. Uh, they want to give you all these rules and things you have to think about and that's right and that's wrong and you shouldn't be shooting this and it's more what people have decided that if you're going to be a landscape photographer you have to have a picture of a dilapidated pier with a slow shutter speed so all the water's blurry and you've got a nice gradient in the sky and all of this stuff but that's not that's one person's style that someone liked and now everybody shares it by having all these rules and these people telling us these things you're not getting a style you're becoming boring and it's the biggest problem with photography today is everybody is trying to be safe and create boring pictures and stay in this tiny little box which we're all told to stay in and while you're in that tiny box you're not going to have a style you're just going to be a boring headshot person, a boring landscape photographer, a boring, boring car photographer, a boring wedding photographer, because you're all doing exactly the same thing. You're following pictures that get lots of likes, but they're just boring everyday pictures. To get a style, you've got to get away from this whole trying to impress everybody else. You need to impress yourself. So everything you do should be that gives you joy, makes you feel good, and the pictures you're taking are pictures that you'll hang in the wall in your house that nobody comes and sees. Yeah, the pictures that you look at at 12 o'clock at night going, I can't believe I took this picture, I love this so much, but nobody else has ever seen it. They're the pictures that are gonna mean the most to you, and the only way you're gonna take those pictures is by you ignoring everybody else. All these internet warriors and these camera club photographers and competitions and schooling uh, they're all really 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 bad for you to be able to create your own style with schooling yes we need to know understand technicals it's really important but technicals shouldn't be your style technicals should be understanding what apertures and shutter speeds color balancing all of these different things understanding what lenses are going to do what and those things, that's really important. So when you have a picture in your head, you know what to set your camera to. But there's no rule about that. It's because I wanna create this effect, I'm gonna set my camera to this to create that effect. And it could be, I want motion blurry shots. So I'm gonna set my camera to a slow shutter speed. Or I really, really want to throw the model out of focus because I like this sort of silhouette blur look but out of focus. So that's when you'd come on to manual focus and then shallow depth of field and dial in the look that you want, not the look that everybody else is telling you to do. How do you find your style? Well, your style has been built into you since the day you were born. The music you grew up listening to, the movies, the TV shows, the art, everything that's visual Everything that stimulates you will become part of your style. And those things, you don't have to recognize that these will come out naturally by you not putting boundaries up or putting a box on you so you can just create. Now, to be a commercial photographer, you got to start off somewhere and you haven't been doing it long enough and you're not going to have a style. So it's really, really hard. So you've just got to do whatever you need to do to make money. And if I bring up my very early work for making money, in this folder, these are all to either make money or build a folio, and this is just crap. There is nothing in this that has my style. There's a few quirky pictures, which might have a bit of my quirk about, you know, don't, don't crop perfect, and having stupid weird props for no reason in a shot. But every now and then I'll get my, a little bit of the feel of the beauty portrait stuff I loved. I don't know, it's just a mishmash, but I, I do get a little bit of this 
early days of feel of capturing this emotion off a model or capturing that moment in time, which is one of the things that I really do like to do. But I'm still not seeing a style in any of this. I'm seeing a bit of quirkiness to my sense of humor and the stuff I love. Um, there's not much giving me the feel of what I, how I feel today. Then every now and then, some of these pictures start to come in and I've always loved my horror movies. I've always loved messed up stuff. I love Tarantino. I like twists. I've always been into more the alternative fashion without it being like a lot of my clients were in their gothic and pinup and steampunk. That's where it was very easy for me to enter fashion. A lot of these labels didn't have a lot of money, but they were screaming for a photographer that could give them that level of photos that they wanted to be so they could sit equal to the rest of the fashion world. In a lot of my early work, I played. I played a lot. I had, I tried to do things out of the square, try to be a little bit different. As I moved more and more into fashion, I wanted to experiment more and more. So I have a saying in my studio and it's based off my true belief about creativity and about how education destroys creativity. There's an amazing talk on TED about this. And one of the things they said was, you get a three, four year old kid and throw a heap of toys in a bathtub with them and you watch them and they'll get a jumbo jet and they'll fly it underwater and they'll get an elephant and they'll have it flying through the air. And then they go to school, the very first day at school they come home and you go to play with your son in the bath and you get the elephant and fly it in the air and your son goes, no, 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 elephants can't fly. Elephants have to be there and planes can't go underwater, they have to be here. So education has already changed the creative mind of a child. And I have a saying in my studio that elephants fly in here and they fly upside down. There is no rules. So whenever we're creating something, we're not, we don't have boundaries put onto ourselves. And the more I've done that, the more I have let my style develop and appear. Now, one of the main things in my style is my black and white. And my black and white is just because the more I shot, the more I found colour was telling the story and taking away what I want the viewer to look at. And what I mean is even with us setting up the cameras here, we had a yellow cord coming on the bench and Beck said, all I could see was the yellow cord. Thanks, Peter. And it is like that. So I was finding that my eye was going to whatever the colour was in the picture, not to whatever where I wanted the viewer to be going within the picture. A lot of the reason why I shoot black and white is I have full control of you. Colour's not going to interfere where I want you to look. The other thing is I find that black and white is timeless. If you have a look at movies, you can just go straight away, that's 70s, that's 80s, that's 90s, that's 2000. Oh, here we come, teal and orange, bleach saturated, all these looks at different years. And then you look on Instagram and you can see this feel come into people's photography as well. Whereas black and white's just black and white, high contrast, low contrast, it's always been black and white. And that is the number one thing for me for my storytelling. I still shoot for my clients in colour, but my clients are actually booking me for my messed up sense of humour. They're not booking me for the black and whites. So what my style is, is which brings the customer back into my studio because they want something other than just a photo. The folder I'm, I'm scrolling through now is all the stuff that I've removed off my normal work. This is how I learned to be who I am today. And a lot of these pictures have got the quirkiness. I was working a lot for a latex company, so I did a lot of work for them. And you'll just see that there's a lot of different stuff. A lot of this stuff is just me finding who I was as a photographer and what my look was. And the longer I continued on this, the more my style just happened, the more I didn't try and conform to what everybody was saying. A perfect example is this was just the hoop that goes under a big gown and I made a model put it on the hair and the client goes we 
selling the hoop, we can't even sell it, but that photo is amazing. And they used it as their campaign. Fashion is not about seeing the clothes, it's telling the story of what you're gonna feel if you wear that label. So fashion was a very, very easy area for me to step in and do crazy stuff because all I had to do was find the emotion of what my client was after and then bring that emotion out. A lot of the things that I really liked was quirky, different. I wanted something that really stood out. And one of the things I say to a lot of photographers is in the old days when you weren't allowed to have phones on in a plane, you get on a plane and you're stuck on the tarmac for two hours because of somebody didn't pack a bag or something. You're bored, you got nothing to do, you can't go to your phone, so you would pick up that magazine behind the seat. You would never ever buy this magazine, you would normally never look at it, but you're bored out of your brain. So then you start flicking through it and you're just going, I want something to try and keep me interested. And then you stop. Whatever picture you stopped on, that photographer won. That photographer has just managed to get you out of this bored state of just flicking to stopping and looking. And you might stop and look and go, I hate that photo. You might stop and going, I love that photo. You might stop and go, what the F? I don't understand this. Doesn't matter, you stop them. All the boring crap they flick through is not what you want to be. And it's so easy to fall into that boring crap hole. I did it early, I got out of it, and over the last eight years I slowly dropped back into it because clients tended to get safe and go away from, go boring. And during lockdown, sending me crazy, being in the most lockdown city in the world, all of a sudden I've got my mojo back by deciding, no, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do and do it crazy. But not on purpose. I'm just going to do what I want to do. And I was with an amazing artist and I was in his studio and he was painting while I was there. And I was just talking to him, I was looking, on, looking at him, he was painting the backgrounds to a series he was doing and they were all on the floor. And he was there with aerosol cans, he was going, and I saw him go and pick up a yellow can and spray a bit of yellow on that canvas, then put it down and grab a green can and spray green on that canvas, then grab the yellow can and spray it across the green a little bit, but he didn't do it on that canvas. And I'm sitting there going, so if I was a student of him, I'd want to know why he did that. And I commented to David, I said, it's incredible what you've just shown me because you're doing exactly what I do in a studio. I will just do something I don't think twice. My gut says it needs this. There's no rule, there's no reason for why it needs this. This is just my eye, my who I am says I need to do this. And he just did it. And I said to David, if I asked you, why did you paint yellow there? You would have just said, because. And that's why your art looks like your art. Because you're not thinking you're doing it with emotion. So I decided to go and get some of my photos that I really liked. And then put my art over the top of them. So... The things that I've pulled out of in the studio and in the real world, I now had free control to be able to put my real feelings into photos I loved but couldn't go to that next extent, either due to the lockdown, either due to models wouldn't be into me splashing paint on them or whatever, to reproduce my, I don't know, my soul, my art, what really, really gets me excited. I've done quite a few photos and I'm looking at my photos and going, all right, I'm looking for my style now in art. And I keep saying, no, 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 stop doing that. Just do your sh you, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And all of a sudden your style will grow and that will be what you become. It's even with my art, I'm trying to rush it too much. I'm really, really trying to push what direction I'm going to go. But 
I'm finding the more I do it, the more I'm starting to feel when I finish an image, this one really talks to me. Yeah, this is cool, this is cool, but this one has a lot of meaning to me, which means this is the direction that I will most likely go with my art. And it's so interesting for me to realise the struggles that people have to find their style because I don't even think about my style in photography. I don't even think. I seriously look at something and go, yeah, I'll do this. And I have a commercial client and she sent me the most lovely email after a shoot. It was a rush shoot. It was very hard. We had to do it during lockdown. There's lots of problems with it. And she just goes, this is the best picture I've ever had. And it's that thing where there's nobody can, I can't write down on a piece of paper how I did that. It's just looking through the lens or looking with my eyes and moving, oh, there is what I, this is what talks to me. If I shoot from here, it's a me shot. And with my art, I'm starting to find that the more I'm looking at my art, I'm actually saying, yeah, that's not really me. That's trying to be them. This is more me. And I've been looking at YouTube channels and thinking, looking at things like that, trying to get my skills better at art. And then the penny dropped. Why am I trying to be able to paint perfect realistic eyes or perfect realistic hair? That's not what I want to be. I want to tell a story. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be squiggles. Like cartoons aren't perfect, but you can get so much joy out of it. And I realised that this is where everyone gets lost in photography. Trying to be perfect photographer for photographers, but they're not the people buying your work. The people who are buying your work are the people who are seeing a soul that they like and want to hang a soul on the wall. They don't want to hang some boring picture they've seen a million times on the wall. So one of the things I think you really, really need to do to have a style is if you 100% switch off from the world. Look at thousands and thousands and thousands of images and grab the ones that really, really talk to you. And they should be from heaps of different areas. They can't just be from one photographer or one artist or one um, band. It has to be everything. And how you stand out is not to be a master of one look, but basically show the world your look. And your look is whatever you felt like on that day. But once you've been doing it enough, your look will tie in with everything you do. Even if I do a colour picture, people say they can still see me in my colour work. So I know I've spoken a bit about my art and I haven't showed any of it. I, I'm not shy to show it, but um, this is hard because this is so new to me. Finding my art that talks best, yeah, this is so much harder. When I'm, if you said, show me some photography, I just go bang. But I'm looking at all my pictures I've done here. There, there is actually a couple that really stand out. There's one that, I might just bring out one that I haven't finished yet. So with this one, um, it's been printed on a matte paper. I have used charcoal, I've used uh, white charcoal, I've used black fine pen, I've used three different red inks, including fake blood from a makeup kit. This isn't a finished picture, this is a picture that's still being worked on, and I have no restrictions when I'm doing this thing. I can take something raw, and then I can do things to that person that I couldn't do in a photo shoot because I would not get that face. It allows me now to have this endless ability to create an image of the stories I would like to really tell. I hope this has been enjoyable. I hope this has helped you. I am going to do a lot more of these rants because I think it's really, really important in this day and age to get away from what everybody's telling you to do and for you just to tell them all to piss off and do what you love doing.